I'm Bob von Bargen, President Emeritus of the Armed Forces Heritage Museum and Project Manager of the Living History Program. In this serial, we will learn about Army Air Force bombing operations in Europe during the Second World War. Retired Air Force Lieutenant Colonel Bob Hansen will relate his experience as a lead crew pilot in the 8th Air Force flying B-24 bombers. Bob will recall his crew training, assembling his crew in the United States, then picking up a brand new bomber fresh from the factory and flying it to England. Let's watch as Colonel Hansen tells us about his training and the war as it was going on in 1944. The interviewer is Chief Master Sergeant Larry Lowndes, U.S. Air Force, retired. Uh, that was a great day, 1 October 1943. Uh, pinned down the wings and the bars as a second lieutenant. We were all real happy about it. Commissioned uh, upon completion of advanced flight training yes. in the uh, AT-10? Mm -hmm. Okay. That so was... uh, when you started to fly the uh, B-24, you were already a second lieutenant then? I was a second lieutenant then, yes. That was, that was, that, that was a big deal. Now I'm a second lieutenant. As a pilot, I was the crew commander. There were <clears throat> four officers, all second lieutenants, and six uh, enlisted, most of them uh, staff sergeants. <clears throat> Well, one or two would be uh, tech sergeants. Cross-country flights, uh, night flying, and formation, yeah, yeah, well, no. formation flying too? Yeah. Right? Oh, a lot of formation flying. Yeah. A lot of formation flying. Okay. That was, uh, that was uh, uh, we, we went at that very slowly and, and, and very carefully because our instructors knew that uh, uh, if you didn't have good formation discipline, uh, Oh, you can screw up the whole mess. What was it like oh, to fly yeah. the B-24? How, how did it handle? I really didn't have any comparison, because uh, that was the only four-engine airplane that I got into. But uh, uh, a lot of people said, you, you, you can always tell a B-24 pilot by looking at his biceps. Well, uh, it wasn't that hard to fly at all. No, on, uh, on, on some training flights, we were dropping training bombs, which were 250-pound Oh, bombs that uh, had a white phosphorus trail. Yeah, sometime you pass through uh, Davis Mountain out in Arizona too. Is that, uh... Well, that's that, that's where we started our uh, uh, what we uh, called phase training. That was our combat crew training oh. at uh, Davis Mountain. Uh, you, you trained as a crew. Uh, yes, trained as a crew. Now you picked up a, a new aircraft. Yes, we Fact, did. Factory new aircraft. Factory new had four hours on it. Oh, well, so we picked it up. Uh -huh. That's that, uh, we took possession of that in Topeka, Kansas. Uh, the B-24 uh, assembly line was uh, was was very uh, very busy. The airplane that we picked up had been built at uh, Willow Willow Run in, the, in Detroit. That's why it had the four hours on it to get it from uh, uh, Willow Run to uh, Topeka. So when you picked up the aircraft, were you? Uh immediately consigned to go take it overseas, uh, or did you stay in the States? Those were our orders. Uh, uh, from here you go to uh, uh, <coughs> Westover, okay. and then Westover up the North Atlantic uh, to, uh, to the uh, B-24 depot uh, in, uh, in England. Uh, again, I ask, were you the only aircraft in the sky at that time, taking the bird over, or did you have a company? Were you in formation as a... No, we, we, were, we were individual. individual. There, there were other airplanes that were uh, were uh, yeah. in the stream, mm -hmm. but we were not in formation. How about that? How about that? Did, did you encounter uh, reasonable weather up on the northern route? Uh, well, <laughs> uh, most of it was not very satisfactory especially going through uh, Iceland uh, and, uh, and, and flying. Uh, we, we, we didn't stop in Greenland, but uh, we, and we, we, we left from Labrador. Uh, and um, it, was, it was cold, the weather, uh, there was uh, always some, some icing that uh, you had to be careful with. And, but we were trained for that. And uh, uh, the uh, primary uh, thought, uh, <coughs> If you're building up ice, go down. 
because it's going to be warmer. And uh, this is especially with freezing rain. Uh, freezing rain that came from above, and you didn't want to stay in that. Uh, uh, freezing rain was probably the, the uh, worst problem that we would have with the airplane. Any icing uh, on, the, on the wing leading edges were pneumatic tubes. Uh, they pulse. Mm -hmm. uh, it, what, what you would do was let the ice build up maybe whatever you could judge, half inch, one inch, and then initiate the uh, pulse, uh, uh, the, the icing, and that would break off the, uh, the, the ice, and you could watch it, uh, the, the flakes of ice would, would fly off. Now, when you took this, uh, this new bird overseas uh, by the northern route, uh, after you passed through Iceland, and your next stop was into England? Yeah, the next stop was uh, in, the, in England, yes. Mm -hmm. To deliver the aircraft. That's right. We delivered the airplane. I forget the exact name of the depot now, but it was on the west coast of England, where they took the generic B-24s and modified them for the mission uh, in, uh, in the 8th Air Force. Uh, how so? Uh, well, they, they, the they added armor plates and, uh, and the bulletproof glass and things like that, so, which the airplane didn't have when, when, when we delivered it. And the armor plate was, well, I forget, it was probably about a, a four or five foot square uh, piece of uh, armor plate that was riveted to the outside of the airplane. By the, on the left side, there the pilot, and on the right side, there the co-pilot. That was the extent of our armor plate. Yes, we were uh, uh, assigned an airplane. We flew that airplane for about, uh, oh, I forget, four or five missions. And uh, for some reason or other, on, on one, one mission, they took our co-pilot, uh, Bill Fuquay, second lieutenant, just like the rest of us, and put him with another crew, and then gave me a, a different co-pilot for, for that mission. Now, <clears throat> unfortunately, uh, during, that, uh, during the formation, uh, part of, of the mission. Uh, <clears throat> there were also B-17s in the area and uh, a squadron of B-17s and a squadron of uh, one of our squadron B-24s shuffled together. It was terrible and uh, the, the, uh, <clears throat> the airplane that my co, my co pilot was in collided with a B-17 and they both crashed lost 20 people. We, we learned that uh, if you're in a cloud uh, stay in formation with your lead because then you know where he is, he knows where you are, and, uh, and even in a cloud you can see well enough to, uh, to, to stay in, in, in formation. So it wasn't the best way to do it, but uh, we, we tried to get out of that, uh, that weather as, as quickly as possible, which was kind of difficult in England in, in the wintertime. I have here in front of me a, a map Ace Air Force bases in England during the war. Uh, were you up in the, up here at Horsham at that location up in the northeast? Right here, where you see Coltishall, right here. Uh, oh, here we are, right here. There's Horsham, right here. All right, that was your base. That was my base, yeah. which was a permanent RAF base that had been uh, assigned to the to the Americans. We were very fortunate to. Because we had uh, good brick buildings and and uh, paved uh, streets, paved sidewalks, whereas uh, uh, probably I'd say 75% uh, of the uh, of the bomber bases and also fighter bases were temporary. And uh, you lived in Quonset huts and uh, uh, either uh, uh, walked in the mud or managed to find a wooden uh, uh, sidewalk to, uh, to, uh, to to walk with, but. Uh, Anyway, we were uh, when, when we arrived at the uh, uh, Horsham, uh, Saint Faith, Saint Faith as a as a crew, we were we were very pleased to find that uh, this is a permanent base, and uh, we were shown to our uh, our, our our dorms, and uh, uh, there was steam heat and uh, uh, walk-in showers, nice and warm. Did you ever have any interaction with the RAF, uh, their bases or bomber? The, the interaction with, with the RAF uh, would be uh, usually a, a diversion. Uh, we get uh, get back from a, 
a mission and our base would be socked in and maybe a, a RAF base uh, 20 or 30 miles away would be available. And that's what we did. We'd always uh, divert to the nearest uh, base that uh, was available and the RAF always welcomed us. Uh, and uh, we were, uh, always had very good treatment and uh, very good uh, uh, food and what have you at, at the RAF bases and vice versa. Well, Lieutenant Hansen is settled in at Horsham RAF base in England. In the next episode, Bob will share his experience during his harrowing 30 missions over Nazi Germany. He will tell you what it was like to fly in formation, straight and level, and at a constant airspeed while Luftwaffe fighters attacked the formations and anti-aircraft artillery called flak exploded around his airplane. He will tell you about his two missions on D-Day. Stay tuned. You'll be intrigued with this story. Oh, and you know, by the way, if you are appreciative of the education and the personal insight you have received from these videos, I encourage you to support the Armed Forces Heritage Museum by making a donation to the museum's website, www.afhmus.org. You know, any amount, large or small, will help to fund future productions of these interviews. Uh, it'll be appreciated. And uh, by the way, do it now. Thank you.